now I have to do it. Um, there was a video that came out showing professional cuddling. Uh, I talked about it a little bit, but I need to actually show you the video of the professional cuddling. Uh, this is just horrendous and never should happen in the planet. These are people who are being hired to cuddle with other people, like strangers. It says, this person is a total stranger to me. Her job is to give people cuddles. She's a professional cuddlist. During a cuddlist session, it's, it's a safe space. It's a space where they get to explore touch. More likely than not, they're not getting the level of touch that they need in their everyday life. I'm just about to go for my very first cuddly session. And personally, I have been going through a tough time lately, so I'm very curious to see if this session will help me in any way. And so the session starts by setting some ground rules. She asks you to think about what you're most comfortable with. As a first timer, becoming relaxed wasn't easy. Because why do you have a stranger's? Says, how would you like me to join you? And she's like, um, I wouldn't. Says, I had to rely on this Cuddle Sutra book for inspiration. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, no. It says, yes, it's pretty awkward. You want an interlock cam? Yeah. Okay, th and then this goes on. It gets better with time, though. Why would you. Why? 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. What? Yeah. Okay, so we're living in a society where we're worried about sexual harassment and sexual abuse. You hire a professional cuddlist, a rando, to come over to your house, and they're professional. What makes you a professional cuddlist? Like, what makes you good at this? I'm just wondering, do you go to cuddlist school? Do you get a PhD in cuddling? And what in the, what in the actual F? Get a boyfriend. You know, get a, get a dog. Like, seriously, people. You know, you know what's happened? We've so, we've so much separated sex and touch from from emotion that now we're trying to re put those things back together but without actually forming an emotional connection with the person you have to hire the person in order to cuddle you i mean like when guys do used to do this it was called a whorehouse when women do it with other women then it's just cuddling because there's nothing sexual going on i guess but it's like it's a random person that you're hugging like what in the world i think we're gonna need to toughen up gang i think we're gonna need to toughen up i'm not sure western civilization can survive the onslaught of, of reality, if you're hiring people to lie next to you and cuddle you who you don't know. What in the world? Okay. Well, joining us here now, Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of the conservative news website, The Daily Wire, and host of The Ben Shapiro Show. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so how much damage did this Republican president just do to the Republican Party uh, by throwing his support behind this Republican Senate candidate who, among other things, is an accused child molester? Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's helping the, the image of the Republican Party among undecided voters, among the young, uh, among people who are looking at which party is going to look for some sort of moral standard here, obviously. Uh, do I think that Trump saying this has made a large difference in how people perceive the Republican Party? No, because we already were having the Roy Moore debate before Trump weighed in, and we had this debate partially about Trump during the 2016 election. So it seems to me that in terms of additional damage that he's doing, I'm not sure he's doing tremendous additional damage, but he's continuing to double down on the damage that's already been done. Okay, listen to this. This is how uh, Donald Trump rationalized uh, his support for Roy Moore. He totally denies it. He says it didn't happen. And, you know, you have to listen to him also. He actually said that like about 10 times that, you know, Roy Moore denies this. Um, is this all just because Donald Trump is desperate for a political win? He wants to get his tax cuts through, and so he needs that Republican seat in the Senate? Because it seems like there's more here than, I, I really than don't just think Roy that Yeah, I really don't think it's that much about, about the tax cuts, per se. Um, I don't even think it's about a Supreme Court seat per se, if that were to come up. Uh, I think that there's this binary model that Trump has relied on politically, which is you got to vote for Republicans because Democrats are worse and it doesn't matter what the Republicans have done. That's part of it. For Trump, the, the most obvious sort of political out here is to quietly back more uh, or to, to at least say as little as possible here. I think there also is the possibility that if he were to go after more really hard here about these allegations, that the next can that, of worm that's opened is, is we go back to all the allegations that were made about Trump personally in 2016. And with that, I just want to, you know, 
does Donald Trump sort of identify in a way with Roy Moore? You know, Roy Moore is the outsider. He's, you know, um, he's been accused of all these allegations of sexual harassment. Donald Trump was accused of sexual harassment. Moore denies it. Donald Trump denies it. Um, you know, Mitch McConnell does not like Roy Moore. Mitch McConnell does not like Donald Trump. You know, he does not see himself in Mitch McConnell. He kind of sees himself more in Roy Moore. You know, I, I don't want to get into to, you know, psychoanalyzing right. the president of the United States. It seems like a dangerous business. Um, but uh, a lot of people are doing it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I do think a that, business. Yeah, I, I do think that that you know the president tends to side with whomever he feels uh, there's a wave of media attention against. Mm. That seems to be his sort of his gut reaction, at least people who he is politically aligned with. Uh, and so for more, he's the tsunami of, of media attention. And apparently there's an article in Politico today about how he felt like this was all staged uh, mm. and maybe the accusers were not telling the truth. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know about that. If that's identifying with with Moore as as though Moore is innocent, but you know, I I don't think it's unfair to say that the president uh, feels very anti media, and and he does abide by a simple rule, which is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. If the media hates Roy Moore, then maybe Roy Moore is my friend. How difficult will it now be uh, for Republican lawmakers in Washington, essentially, to force Moore out of this campaign to say some kind of writing campaign, or even refuse to see him? He's not leaving. I mean, this, it, is, it, it, this is it. The, the only person who may have been able to come down with both feet and try to push Moore out of the race was the president, right? Mm -hmm. But he might have been able to say, "Listen, everybody in Alabama, this is a disaster. He's running, at the very least, from a political standpoint. He's now running neck and neck with Doug Jones. He may be running behind Doug Jones in a state that goes 66-33 Republican yeah. on a typical election. Uh, so, you know, if you really want to win this." seat, abandon Roy Moore, move over to Jeff Sessions, for example. He could solve two, two, you yeah. know, two problems. He, he doesn't like Jeff Sessions, apparently. He could move him out of the AG spot and have him run as a writing candidate in Alabama. Trump didn't do that. Roy Moore was, was disinclined to drop out anyway, because that's, that's Moore's kind of MO. Uh, last question. It's kind of related. It's about a piece you wrote uh, on Tuesday in the National Review. It's about preventing sexual harassment. Uh, here's part of it. Conservatives have long proclaimed that men, left unchecked, will act like pigs with regard to women. Uh, so you argue that what's needed is a return to traditional social norms, like sex would be connected with marriage, thus cementing the connection between sexual activity and commitment. Carefully cultivated rules of conduct between men and women, including in many religions prescribed physical contact, expectation that men would protect women in chivalrous fashion. Uh, it sounds like you're saying it's let's go back to the good old days that are all so much better. Uh, well, it's not really that. It's that right. there were certain, the, the, the basis for a lot of conservative thought is that human beings are inherently flawed, that we are sinful people who are capable of doing bad things. And that there are all these rules in place to protect women against men. Like a lot of these rules were designed to keep men in check. This is why men were taught to be gentlemen. Now, not all men acted like that. And I think what the feminist movement and a lot of the left said was, these rules didn't keep men in check. What if we just get rid of all the rules? And now what's happening is a sort of an ad hoc formation of new rules. But these new rules don't really seem to be particularly coherent. So you'll see same, the same people saying that it's totally fine for men, men and women to go out to bars at night, whether he's an employer and she's an employee, and they get drunk together. And then if they have sex and everything goes well, it's fine. But if they get drunk together and they have sex and it doesn't go well and she doesn't, you know, and she's unhappy about it, then this was some sort of exploitative situation. You can see this in the split about Monica Lewinsky now, right? right. You're actually seeing some people on the left saying that that Clinton should have resigned over Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. At the time, they weren't saying that. They were yeah. saying it was a fully consensual relationship. What I'm saying is that whether you accept the conservative rules or, or a new set of rules, we have to have some set of rules that acknowledge that no matter how much we wish that men would stop being pigs, men are going to be pigs except if there are rules in place. And just shouting at the wind saying, I wish men would be better, I wish men would be better too. And that's why you know, I intend on teaching my son standards of right. behavior and teaching him to be a gentleman. It's what my father taught me. Uh, but I, I think that living in a standardless world and then just magically expecting human nature to change, I think, is a, is a recipe for disaster. Uh, you're not going as far as Mike Pence, the vice president who would not eat alone with a woman who's not his wife? I mean, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with Mike Pence's rule right. for Mike right. Pence. You know, I think that the, the idea that this, by the way, this has been a long-standing religious tradition in, yeah. in Orthodox Judaism, is that men and women are not supposed to be alone in rooms with, with members of the opposite sex who, who are not their, their spouses. But you're not saying that, that you, know, you know, 20, 30 years ago that there was no sexual harassment, of course that not. women weren't being bothered. I mean, at least now there, there seems to be, you know, it is safe for women to come out and say, I was sexually harassed by that guy. And that's great. And I, and yeah. I wish that had happened, you know, 20 or 30 right. years ago. I wish that it happened 40 years. In fact, I think that some of what drove the feminist movement was exactly that, right? It was a rebellion against the, the mad men culture, this idea that there was this repressive hierarchy that was treating women as sex objects. But the problem is, are women not treated as sex objects now? Because it seems to me that every single person in Hollywood that I know of right. is now being accused of this stuff. And that is the most leftist, permissive society 
in America. So what exactly happened here? The point that I'm making is that the problem was not necessarily some of the rules. The problem was failure to adhere to the right. rules. The left tore down all the rules, and now they're trying to create rules through these backdoor mechanisms like yes means yes in California. Those rules in many cases are going to end up being more puritanistic than a lot of the original rules. Right. Right? The, the rules in California, this yes means yes rule, is basically I'm supposed to have a lawyer there with me when yeah. I'm having you know, sex with somebody going down the checklist of consent. And that's, uh, that seems to me a lot less doable than an expectation that you only have sex with the person you're married to. We're out of time, but I guess the, at the end of the day, a return to common decency. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. probably not a bad idea. Exactly. Ben, I've wanted to have you in for a long time. It's great to talk to you. Hey, thanks Thank for you. having me. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you.